song called Eternal Darkness that I got the basic tracks for a week ago yesterday up in Provo, Utah. So I got that and another one done. There was four uh, ready. I got Eternal Darkness done, pretty much. We could, you know, tweak it. We're going to tweak it, do, but we got the basics down. And the other one, which we're not named. It's not named yet. It's the simple one that I've been making. <laughs> had been sitting in my friend's closet for a year over a year <clears throat> and has been sitting in the trunk of my car until yesterday which is amazing because it's been like 105 it's been horrifying weather down here I hate california i hate california that's all uh so let's clean it up I'm not clean yeah let's clean it a bit <laughs> actually consider considered if you're gonna do the complete Randy Rose collection you have to have one of these because he had one and he also had the uh, black beauty that he just bought and never played on stage he just had pictures taken with and played by himself I was gonna say played with himself but that doesn't sound right so if you really I mean all these people <laughs> And I was thinking, I've got 16 different Rhodes guitars. And I don't have the Black Beauty. Holy crap. So, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm that into it. Because one, I've got three Ace guitars with pick three pickups. I hate the middle pickup. It gets in the way. I have to lower it. I gotta get a thing that's so it's almost full, not there. It's just there to for the looks. But uh, it is pretty, and I got a black one just with two pickups. But 
So the just so you know, the story on Aunt Randy's black SG, he liked it. He knew he liked Gibson's, the sound. He couldn't stand it, that it didn't stay in tune. This one also has a little tuning problem, but no big deal. He sold, he sold it to his friend's brother, Stan Lee of the Dickies. His friend's brother is, his friend is actually not his friend. It's Kevin Dubrow's friend. The guy that put out uh, Randy Rhodes' year, A Quiet Right Year is the book and the DVD, that guy. His brother is Stan Lee of the Dickies. If you don't know who Stan or the Dickies are, or Stan Lee, you know, not Stan Lee of Marvel Comics. That's what he named himself after. This is a, the Dickies. Look up the Dickies immediately. They are the best underrated punk pop punk band in the world. And I always thought this guy is like, you know. Punk, you know Really good, like. So my friend Ward, who has now passed away, and they do a song called Manny Moon Jack, Ward would be in the front row so many times and go backstage so many times that when they saw Ward, they changed it to Manny Moon Ward. Manny Moon Ward. And Ward has a tape something. Well, Ward's gone now. He was a really good friend of mine, and he really turned me on to a lot of cool music. Turned me on to. Get it? I'm old. And yeah, he was like a grade above me and like the coolest guy in friggin school everybody liked ward he had a friggin camaro i don't know what color it was i people argue back and forth but the fact is he flipped it and everybody knew about that and i don't know how he flipped the damn thing but he flipped it he had it taken to a place they fixed it all up and everything it was a really nice camaro he ended up selling it, and, but the guy, everybody loved the guy. Everybody. Even me, I loved the guy. And he'd come up, he goes, dude, you gotta listen to this. And I'm like, dude, Black Sabbath, I got like two of their albums. No. And he, you know, put on Sabotage. And I'm like, because oh. I had like Sabbath Buddy, Sabbath, Paranoid, and the first one. I'm like, yeah, that's it, right? Oh, yeah, that's it. He put on Sabotage, I freaked out and he put on volume four i'm like sabotage holy crap though jeez so you know he'd bring me stuff oh you know stuff that i wouldn't think but he was you know you're older he was hanging out with the older crowd and that's see that was the way i was tall thin long hair i looked like a rock star in high school and by 12th grade i looked the part and all the other posers, they, they just couldn't get it together. I would show up at school, full eyeliner, uh, lip gloss, if I needed a you know base because of or foundation because of zits, I put it on. Hair fully done. I did not sweat. I didn't go to PE. If it was hot, I got a ride home back into you know. School is a big deal, you know, just for appearances. So people could see the beauty that I was. I was so conceited. And I had this one little girl that would whistle at me if I had to walk home. And I knew it was. It was this little 10th grade chick. I'm like, come on, man. I ended up marrying, falling in love with her, marrying her, and having a beautiful son. Whose birthday was also yesterday, or Tuesday. Tuesday. 33. 33. So 34 years ago, 34 years, over 34, almost 35 years ago, I met her. She was sick. She just turned 16, and I was 18. And then to top it off, not because of, I kidnapped her from the uh, 
home for unwed mothers that her mother had put her in, which made me like triple jail. Not I wasn't jail bait. I was jail. I was on. You know, there was an APB out on us for a few days, and then we finally called his her mom and said, "Listen, just call it off. We're gonna get married. We're having the kid. That's it." And she, you know, she backed off and everything turned out roses, except I was an idiot. And uh, she left, she came back, she left, she came back, she gave me so many chances. Sorry, Margie. I don't know why I'm even getting into this. Too much personal. You guys aren't supposed to know that much. So anyways, Randy sold his black SG that looked pretty much like this to Stan Lee. And then someone stole his. And he's been looking for it ever since. So if anybody comes across Stanley's Black SG that used to belong to Randy Rhodes, give it back. I know this isn't it. Alright, so what else can we play? Really quick to just finish things up. <laughs>